Quick question, what do you think is the most popular animal in the world? Well, I was curious and after extensive research, I found a map. A world map that used Google Keyword Planner and cross-reference searches for 170 different animals across 180 countries to determine the most loved animal in each country. For example, monkeys won over Australia, pandas have Indonesia in a chokehold, and apparently my mother country of Senegal loves hippos. No comment on that. But you want to know what the overwhelming favorite was? The runaway winner was, by far, the tiger, with 44 countries riding for them. At number 2 with 28 countries were hippos, proving that you gotta be famous to be infamous. These were the top 10 animals according to this map. It's cool, but it's not perfect. The lion is the national animal for 19 different countries, a record, but they just barely made the top 10. But then this got me thinking, what about all those animals that don't get nearly enough talk time? Well, this video is for them. Here's 10 animals you either didn't know existed, forgot about, or that my personal bias which we talked about more. And starting off is the maned wolf. It's one of those animals whose name does nothing for it since it's not a wolf, not a fox, or even a Latin coyote in black knee highs. Apparently, they're just themselves, and they are literally built different. They're tall enough to look down on some Great Danes, but at about 50 pounds soaking wet, they're more in the weight class of a Basset Hound. How you can dwarf Scooby yet get bodied by Snoopy's depressed cousin is unconscionable. And virtually every picture of a maned wolf looks AI generated. It's a genetically sequenced identity crisis, so it's only right that it sounds like one. <laughs> Is it a roar? Is it a bark? Is it a cry for help or the damnation of a higher being? Nobody knows. Not even him. Also, you probably heard that the main wolf smells like Snoop Dogg salad. This is 100% true. In fact, they've even gotten some zoos raided by police looking for cannabis. But all they found was a candid mid-piss. If the canine family had a cookout, this ginger still puppy would be the one pulling up with veggie burgers. Most of a main wolf's grocery list includes fruits and veggies, with Lobera, aka the wolf's apple, getting its name from this portrait mode fox constantly eating it. They also made history as the first wild animal to be successfully treated through stem cell therapy after one got hit by a truck. All in all, I think they're pretty cool. I'd call them a dog that can't dog, but that's more accurate for the raccoon dog, another animal you probably forgot existed. Most people know about them from two things, the tanuki suit from Mario and their role in Japanese mythology as the bake dunuki. And due to certain aspects of that myth and the fact that I'd like to stay monetized, that's all I'm gonna say about them. Cause unlike them, I don't have the balls to test guidelines. Raccoon dogs aren't even remotely related to raccoons and basically stole their entire flow through convergent evolution. They're canines, meaning they sit at the same lunch table as wolves, dogs, and coyotes. But their closest cousins are foxes. Which reminds me, close your eyes. There's no jump scare coming, I swear. This will be fun, just, just close them real quick. All right, everyone ready? Okay. That was not the sound of two clowns with marital issues. That was what a raccoon dog roll call sounds like. You see what I mean by the whole dog that can't really dog properly thing? They're the only canines that hibernate. Seriously, they're the only one. They're that special. They can also climb trees, cause of course they can. They're willing swimmers, cause sounds about right. And they may or may not have been responsible for a certain virus putting the world on timeout. But considering the war crimes committed against them for their fur, I'm willing to look past it. There is no looking past this ET looking antelope. This is a Saiga, and that is 100% unfiltered. They really do look like Star Wars in the face. That sizable schnoz piece is designed to filter out the dust kicked up by a herd that used to be million strong. It's like a built-in respirator that also makes them look like Alf's illegitimate child. I realize that's a dated reference, so here's Alf, and here's a Saiga. You see it too, right? Now you might be wondering, can that nose be used to amplify mating calls and increase their chances with females who sexually select for bigger noses? And you're absolutely right, they do use their noses to amplify mating calls and increase their chances with females who sexually select for bigger noses. Cause size queens come in many forms. And speaking of female validation, eligible bachelors will run fades with each other using those horns in order to gain control of a harem. Unfortunately, those horns can get them laid and laid to rest, since Saigas have been victims of poaching and that in disease and habitat loss nearly has this Narnia goat's entire population in the gulag. Today, they're critically endangered and found only one place in the world, in the dry grasslands and semi-deserts of Central Asia. But that's too depressing, so here's a baby saiga. Now here's two baby saigas, but you want to know what's even more depressing? 
there's a good percentage of the population that doesn't realize that narwhals are real. Yeah, we, we didn't make those up. They really do be out here swimming in the ocean, causing a commotion, because they're just so awesome. It's an aquatic unicorn, except that horn is actually a giant inside out tooth with millions of nerve endings. We used to think that narwhals use this single tooth overbite for violence, but with how sensitive it is, it's much more likely that it just tells the whale about the world around it, similar to cat whiskers. Also, that tooth is flexible and they can bend it a foot in any direction, and I didn't even know that until this video. One reason we don't know more about them is because narwhals are painfully shy introverts that can legitimately get flatlined by panic attacks. When narwhals get pressed or stressed, their heart rates will slow all the way down to 3-4 to four beats a minute. A slow heart rate is great for swimming in ice water all day, but a heart deciding to work part time while you're fighting for your life is a good way to see the gates. And with a crippling fear of people, human interaction can put nature's anxiety whale on life support. But even this high-strung struggle cetacean has an unlikely friend. In 2016, scientists noticed a male narwhal traveling with a pod of beluga whales, and ever since then, they've watched him run with the belugas like he was one of their own. But there's a good chance this is more than just a friend situation. Cause narluga isn't a ship name, it's the result of a beluga and a narwhal hooking up and creating a hybrid. Which they can do, since somehow an eternal extrovert and a whale with a literal self-destruct setting for social interaction are related. Speaking of related you know how i said the main wolf isn't actually a wolf or a fox well i can give you 100 tries you'll never guess this deer dog's closest canine cousin and that's because it's an animal a lot of y'all probably didn't even know existed and that would be the south american bush dog even though they look like that meme of 5'11 versus 6 foot. We all have that brother, sister, or cousin we swear stole height from us. Evidently, the maned wolf took all the legs in the family and turned the bush dog into an ankle biter. I can only make this joke so many times, but if you took one look at them and thought they were a wolverine or an undercooked bear or even a really confused Tasmanian devil, nobody would blame you. Especially since for a while, we thought this weasel beagle went extinct. It took a few years for us to realize they didn't get discontinued and even longer to put them in the canine club. Bush dogs live in packs and they're kind of like the African wild dogs of the Amazon. But instead of running prey down on land, bush dogs would rather ambush ops in water, which they're really good at thanks to webbed feet, their ability to dive, but most importantly, the power of friendship. They usually go for small rodents, birds, lizards, and the occasional capybara. But bush dogs have been on record murking a taper after chasing it around for hours. The same taper that can weigh about two prime shacks at nearly 700 pounds. Yeah, the power of friendship. Finding one bush dog, let alone a whole pack, is veteran level difficulty. But if you happen to be walking through the jungle and smell salad, you might just get lucky because the scent signature they mark their territory with gives a strong impression of vinegar. But since they can fold a several hundred pound horse cow, luck might not be the right word. You need more than luck to catch this cat. The clouded leopard is so secretive and so introverted that we honestly don't know a whole lot about them. We do know that they easily earn gold medal for tree climbing, even for a cat. They can rotate their ankles 180 degrees, which means unlike most other cats, clouded leopards can climb down a tree head first. They'll even cross a branch upside down for no other reason but to flex. In fact, their entire existence is a flex. It's widely believed that this overcast kitty diverged from the common ancestor of the panther and cats up to 9 million years ago. Not only does that make them the most ancient species of cat alive today, it also makes makes them a living fossil. You see, on the left is the skull of a clouded leopard, and on the right is the headpiece of Smilodon, aka a prehistoric predator of the saber-tooth variety. In fact, clouded leopards often get called the modern-day saber-tooth because they have the longest canine teeth of any cat relative to body size. That's longer than lions, tigers, and even the Caymus paralysis demon, the jaguar. Also, despite its name, it's not technically a leopard, and while you could call it the smallest of big cats, scientists widely believe that the clouded leopard is actually the link between big cats and small cats. Big cats referring to lions, tigers, jaguars, leopards, and snow leopards, which also aren't even real leopards either, and small cats being the rest, like cheetahs, pumas, ocelots, and of course domestic cats. Also, it's not really a size thing, it's more like, like big cats can roar but can't purr, and small cats can purr but can't roar. Clouded leopards can't do either, instead they do this. I hope that made sense, I feel like that got complicated. And it gets even more complicated with this next animal. Cause what do a manatee, a dugong, and an elephant all have in common? They end up at the same family reunion as the rock hyrax. That's right, this African boulder gerbil, this marmot from the motherlands, is cousins with the biggest thing on earth with legs. The hyrax is also clade mates with aardvarks, elephant shrews, and tenrix. It makes less sense the harder you think about it. Although in their defense, hyraxes have the same tusks that elephants do, but like with the maned wolf and the bush dog, someone had to get the short end. And did they ever. Hyraxes also can't really control their body temperature, despite that being one of the first rules of being a mammal. So to fight the fact that nature made them as close to cold-blooded as a mammal can get, hyraxes spend most of their time basking in the sun. I used to think they were just chill like that, but apparently chill is exactly what they're trying to avoid. Also, they make a sound that's almost a guaranteed trip to therapy if you ever hear it in person. I'm not gonna do this for every animal, but I couldn't not add this. 
This thing has more in common with mammoths than it does with hamsters. I want that to sink in. And the only thing arguably more unbelievable than that is whales and dolphins being the closest living relatives of hippos. At this point, nothing really needs to be said. We all know hippos are homicidal demon pigs with the temperament of a landmine. In fact, I'm pretty sure they're only Google famous the same way Logan Paul was back in 2017. If you know, you know. But what a lot of people don't know is the tiny travel size version that lives today. The pygmy hippo is five times smaller and half as tall as their murderous cousins. They're also forest animals, solitary and naturally shy, and they're much less of a threat to humanity. Just don't go and tell them that. You know, this one's name is Sweet Pork. I'm not even making that up. Like basically every other animal, they can be on demon timing if you push them enough. But clearly the aquatic oppression horse stole all their ill will, cause no shot could you slap one dead in the face and not end up dead with no trace. Huh. Well, I'm not afraid to admit when I'm wrong. Now you've definitely heard of this next animal before. It's just that the last time you probably did, Chris Rock and Jada Smith were on speaking and not slapping terms. And of course, we're talking about Madagascar's top predator and the bane to lemurs everywhere, the Fusa. Although with its spelling, I'm pretty sure it's actually Fossa, but the day I pronounce it like that is the day I lay my childhood to rest. The Fusa is pretty much a Madagascar mongoose. And if you know how psychotic mongoose are, you'll understand why the lemur population treated them like terrorists. But one thing I never realized because of the movie is they're not that much bigger than the lemurs they eat. And they have the same flexible exorcist ankles as the clouded leopard, meaning trees are pretty much their home court, especially since they have tails longer than a Monday to keep balance. Fusas also have, I'm gonna say, interesting mating practices. And once again, I wanna stay monetized, so I'm not gonna step in that minefield. Just know that if you follow a female Fusa long enough, you might not hear the choo-choo, but you will see a train. And while it's usually lemurs taking the yell, as apex predators, this monkey cat murks anything that doesn't cook them first. Sometimes they'll even work together with one climbing a tree to scare prey onto the ground where the partner can retire their will to live. Not bad. Also, I know you see that flex, but there's no bigger flex than this next animal soloing the US Navy. Back in the 70s, US nuclear submarines were forced to fall back after they took damage to the rubber neoprene layer covering the sensitive sonar domes. This compromised their navigation, and at first people were rushing to the conclusion that the commies had gotten one over on them. What actually happened was that out of the over 500 species of sharks, the US Navy managed to get griefed by one of the smallest. The cookie cutter shark is only about a foot and a half, and these giant killers feed on some of the biggest animals in history for a living. They got their name because this parasite will swim up to a whale and then use its jaws to slice out a perfectly circle shaped piece of flesh. It doesn't kill them, but the sea hickey it leaves behind is for life. It's like a parasite tramp stamp. And it's not just whales, anything from seals, to killer whales, to even other sharks can get it. On rare occasions, even some humans find out the bitey way. In the 80s, up to 30 US submarines allegedly took damage from the cookie cutter's dental. To the point where the only solution was a fiberglass coating. We always talk about great whites, tiger sharks, bull sharks, but none of them can say they successfully committed hit and runs on a superpowers navy, and with a resume like that, they definitely deserve to get talked about more. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. If you learned something from this video, kindly consider checking out my book, 100 Animals That Can Effing End You. Link in the description if you're interested. And if you knew all 10 of these animals already, you have my respect. Drink water, get sun, hug your moms, and I'ma see y'all in the next one. Hey babies, you got half a million people that love you. What do you think about that? Yeah? See, you got half a million people that love you. Yeah. Say thank you. <laughs>